We do welcome all. It's good to see all who are with us this morning. Let's all stand as Al comes and leads us in our opening hymn, opening prayer. One hundred and forty-seven, and can it be? Yeah. 
I don't care if it's Republican, Democrat, Independent, whatever it may be. Whatever God is leading you to do, that's what you need to do. That's what you vote for. That's your constitutional right, and also a right of being a citizen of the United States of America, that you can vote. And I will tell you, vote on November the 4th, which is a Tuesday. No school here in St. Tammany Parish because of Election Day. I think that's in a lot of parishes, I would presume, uh, as far as having it on that day, that basically uh, no schools as far as with different things, so keep that in mind. That's coming uh, November the 4th. Um, also, uh, understand that Wally Langsford now resides at Lacombe Nursing Home. She now stays there. Uh, she now currently is in room 134. Understand that may change from time to time. So if you go there and she's not room 134, or you don't see the name where it says Wally Langsford, uh, ask them at the desk and they'll be more than happy to tell you uh, where she's at. Um, my suggestion, if you go to see her, go sometime, in, I think in the afternoon would be good uh, as for seeing her. Most of the time in the morning, they're doing therapy or some things with her. Saturday and Sunday, you can go almost any time, but they don't do anything with them on Saturday and Sunday. Saturday and Sunday is basically, um, they're on their own as for with different things. They're still watching, but they don't do anything as for working with them. Uh, so she's at the home nursing home. Uh, and right there in the home, so that's where can she... Can she have anything brought to her? Yeah. Oh yeah, you can bring anything you want. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can bring anything to her. Uh, anything for as far as anything. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, they don't restrict you from anything. Uh, just know that when you go there, as far as the Lacombe Nursing Home, there's a bell that you have to ring at the front desk. Then you hear a little sound, and they open, and that opens it up for you. You just can't go there and just open the door, even though it's posted, just to let you know. You got to ring a little bell, and then they'll you hear a buzzer sound signifies the door is open. And they do that for the safety of the patients inside, but they don't want them just wandering off and, and going out. Uh, but you, know, you can go there anytime you want. Uh, as far as that, the people there are really very nice uh, as, far, as far as all the people who work in there. Uh, and my uh, dealing with all the nursing homes, for me, that's by far the, probably the better one of all of them around here. Uh, and dealing with a lot of them around here. And I know, I think um, even even on that, I don't know, what, what's your thought on it? I'm a different one, but that's... Yeah, different. yeah, <laughs> I, I'm just saying that. As far as, yeah, and they all, they all basically, you know, all different as far as with, every, as far as with everything. Um, but just um, just know that she's there, and uh, you can go see her almost any time you would like. Even if she's in therapy, they'll let you even take her out of therapy, and you can talk with her and everything else and bring her back. Uh, I, did, I did that last week, and that's fine. So. So she is. Um, so she is there. Any other announcements? Anything else we need to be aware of, or things that are happening or taking place uh, towards in our area? Um, if not, our Old Testament scripture then for today is found in Second Kings chapter two. Second Kings chapter two, verses five to fourteen. Second Kings chapter. And this is right before. This is while Elijah was going up into heaven. So it's an interesting thing here that takes place in a conversation that took place between Elijah and Elisha, before, right before Elijah went up into heaven. And it's an interesting conversation that took place here in Second Kings chapter two, verses five and following. Here it says, the company of prophets of Jericho went went up to Elisha and asked him. Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, he replied, but do not speak of it. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men of the company of prophets went and stood at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at, jo at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on dry ground, almost a similar way in which the parting of the Red Sea. But this is the, the Jordan River is a little bit smaller, but yet it's still it's a Jordan, the Jordan River, and it's parted until both Elijah and Elisha now are going between the two bodies of water on dry ground. When they crossed 
when they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. You have asked a, very di you have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said. Yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours, otherwise not. As they were walking along, talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and of horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and the horses of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them apart. He picked up the cloak that had fallen from Elijah and went back and stood on the banks of the Jordan. Then he took the cloak that had fallen from him and struck the water with it. Where now is the Lord? Said the God of Elijah, he asked. When he struck the water, it divided to the right and to the left, and he crossed over. Here we, we have to where Elijah, Elisha is taking over for Elijah. And again, we see how indeed that Elijah is one of the two that is named here in the Old Testament that did not see death but went into heaven alive. The other one, of course, was Enoch. It says he walked with God and was no more. That is, he went with God and was taken. And both of them were taken up uh, without facing death. But the relationship between Elijah and Elisha was one of a common bond, both of them there. And it passed on from Elijah to Elisha. And he was, was going to do and now take place what Elisha, what Elijah had done. And so we see the miraculous working of God in the life of both men. In the Old Testament, who, remember when Moses was born and his mom put him in a basket, and there he was in the basket floating in the Nile, who was it that found Moses, while he was floating in the basket in the Nile. Yes, the daughter of Pharaoh <clears throat> took him into her house. As for as raising him, even afterwards, he called his sister, who she did, she did not know, and he called her mom, and she nursed him and everything else. But it was Pharaoh's daughter who found Moses in the basket, and also named Moses as well, giving him the name Moses because I drew him out of the water. Pharaoh's daughter named him as well, not even his own mother. Interesting Bible tribute for today. Let us continue as we sing to the Lord. 577, the old ship of Zion.
We will be ordering some calendars for 2009. So just keep in mind, you know, uh, haven't done that, probably do it tomorrow. Uh, we will be ordering calendars, so hold off on buying calendars from any of us. We probably get cheaper here. It's more just, you know, it's for a little or nothing as far as what we have in here. So we are going to be getting 209 calendars in. Uh, so just be a little patient, and as soon as they come in, we'll let you know as far as with everything. But we're going to be ordering calendars for 2009. So keep that in mind. New Testament scripture for today is found in Matthew chapter 17, the first 13 verses. Matthew chapter 17. Here, the Mount of Transfiguration. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, John, and the brother of James, and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. There, he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as the light. Just then, there appeared before them Moses and Elijah, talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud enveloped them. And a voice from the cloud said, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus instructed them, Don't tell anyone what, it happened, what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The disciples asked him, why, why then do the teachers of, of the law say that Elijah must come first? Jesus replied, To be sure, Elijah comes and will restore all things. But I tell you, Elijah has already come. But they did not recognize him for they had, but had done to him everything they wished. In the same way, the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he was talking to them about John the Baptist. Again, in here, what this signifies and what this shows us by the power of God, whether alive or dead, we will be alive with the Lord. Remember, Moses died on the mount, did not enter into the promised land, even though he saw with his eyes the promised land. And Elijah was taken up in the whirlwind and up to God. And understand that with the Lord, it is not the end, but just the beginning. And here we get evidence that both Mo Moses and Elijah were indeed with the Lord God Almighty. In the New Testament, if you remember, Jesus was confronted one day by a man who was demon-possessed. And then Jesus healed him that day. When he was demon-possessed, do you remember where he used to live? Yeah, cemeteries, the graves, the tombs, uh, all those are, are basically it. He, this demon-possessed man used to live among, he said, among the tombs, and he was naked. And he was naked. So when he confronted Jesus concerning as a demon-possessed man, he was a naked man, uh, as far as before the Lord. And then the Lord healed him of his demon-possessed. He was fully clothed, and it says, and of his right sitting there speaking to the Lord. And the most interesting thing about this here is that the people did not glorify God. Instead, they were afraid because of what God had done and what has taken place there. They were fearful of all things. But understand that God can heal all things and is able to heal all things as well, no matter what takes place and no matter what happens as far as our physical condition. And one day, because of what we may be experiencing now, one day we will be healed of all things, and we will be with the Lord, and we will be with Him, with the right presence of mind as well. In the way of prayer, in the back of your bulletin, there are a few, remember these in prayer, and many others as well. Um, 
progress report concerning Don Denton Jr. It seems though he's doing better. They're still trying to figure out what's going on. Um, there are different things going on. It may be a virus. It may be just something going around, but they're not sure. But uh, it seems as though uh, things are going a little bit better concerning uh, as forth with him. Uh, the pastor at New Hope uh, Baptist Church in Independence, Tom Hicks, has cancer. Remember him in prayer. Uh, uh, pastor at uh, First Baptist Madisonville, uh, still dealing with shingles. Uh, so remember him. Uh, as I mentioned, our Sunday school class, there are 11 churches in our area. It is not in Slidell, but in our area uh, that are without pastors. So remember these churches in prayer. Uh, concerning what is to take place with them, uh, pray pray for them as well. Uh, again, pray for the upcoming election. God leads upon your heart. Pray for the many people here in St. Tammany Parish and what they're dealing with, uh, as far as all the assessments that has taken place and the things that have come up as far as with property owners. So pray for them. Uh, traveling mercies for those who are and will be traveling. Watch over them. Be with them. Uh, update on Roxanne. Anything. So remember, remember the friend Roxanne and, and also uh, her, her boyfriend Eric, remember them, and the family as well, uh, so remember them in prayer. Other prayer requests to see uh, this morning that you would like to share with us. And, uh, the family of Ryan Fowler, he took his life this week, and oh, his sorry. mom was on vacation in Boston. Uh, well, it's, they have an investigation going on, or at least the body check is saying it's kind of, Devastating. Yeah, so remember the family and friends as well. I'm sure will. Others. Billy. Rose, yeah. Remember Rose in prayer. She Oh what? A bug. Okay. Well that's good. That's good. Gotta be a bug in blood. <laughs> That's good. That's, that's a prayer of Thanksgiving. Uh, that, that is good. So thank, thankful for that. That's good. And, and also continue, remember JD, he's doing good as well. So I'm going to him in prayer. Others in prayer. Sandy. Pray for Paula Eastland. She's a teacher at Will's school. She's battling and saying something about me. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh. <laughs> what? Pray for it. Alright, so remember, okay, we, sh we sure will. Remember, remember her in prayer, we sure will. Uh, others? Renee? Alright. Okay, sure will, and we miss Olivia and, and Melissa, so remember them in prayer. Olivia uh, had, a, had a bug going on as well, and uh, different things, so she's doing better, so your family, she will. Others? Megan? Mindy? Why do we need to pray for Mindy? She didn't feel good? She looks like she's feeling good now, huh? <laughs> yes, remember Mindy in prayer, she's under a lot of stress. Mindy, Mindy is student teaching, for those of you who don't know. She's teaching, student teaching got a cold, but she's also a student teaching with compound stress, which brings this upon her. So she's teaching a, what is it, 11 grades? 11 grades. So remember her prayer, as far as all student teachers, or all teachers, period, what they go through, uh, as far as dealing with uh, 
uh, with students. You know, we found out that there are students out there like me and Danny Bryant who give all these teachers headaches. So they, they are out there. Uh, they're still out there, Danny. They haven't gotten rid of any of them. So. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Other prayers. Yes, ma'am. Is that? Okay. Oh wow. Okay. This is your brother-in-law, you said? Okay. All right. All right. Remember, remember, remember you do, you got some physical problems that she's dealing with as well, so remember, remember Miss Ida in prayer as well, she's got some, some issues as far as hips and different things, as far as, and, and the worst part about it is that she hurt a bowling finger. And let me tell you, she can't bowl now for a while, and, that, and that's hard. Is that basically, you know, one of the outs that she likes to go and do is what we're doing it now, and I understand that. But remember, Ms. Ida, as she has some uh, physical problems that she's dealing with as well. Um, she hurt her hip and then also her finger and other, other problems as well as she has. So remember, but remember Susie as well. Susie takes care of her and is there for her as well. So remember both of them in prayer. We sure will. Other prayer requests. Melton. Remember me. Uh, yes. Faith. Yeah, Melton has them. My shoulders are Okay, so remember, you remember Melton and Craig, he's got some spurs on his neck and, and it's affecting his shoulder and affecting you know, how he moves and what he, how long he sit or stand or whatever the case may be. So remember him and Sandy in prayer and what the Lord leads at this point with that, we sure will. Others? Gloria? Rick. And Rick is who? You sure? Okay. <laughs> Ricky and Ronnie, why don't both of them in prayer? Are you sure well? How's Ricky doing? Not too good? Is he doing okay? Okay. Because I know he had that surgery and I don't know if he helped or didn't help or whatever the case may be. I don't know. Uh, but just remember. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. So remember Ricky in prayer. We sure will. Others. Ginger. All right. Yeah, sure will. Others. Good to see Patty here with us. Patty had a had a bout with some with some things going on as far as with her physical and she and, and you're doing okay? Pretty good right now? You, how are you doing as far as with all that now? Still aches and pains. Still aches and pains? Yeah. Well, welcome to the club. I mean, we all have them. <laughs> I did have one doctor finally tell me all my doctors have always said for lies that you're not 26 anymore. <laughs> you know, just face it. Did you ask him what? <laughs> He's right. He's right. That's right. Did you tell him you're 39 holding? <laughs> but, but it's good to have you here. We'll be praying for you and your family as well. Uh, Shane and Kayla, remember them in prayer. And Shane, she still has some problems with, with different things. So remember him and, and the family in prayer. So just continue to remember that. We sure will. Others in prayer. Anyone else? Anything else? Remember each other in prayer, pray for each other. Traveling mercies for those who will be traveling and are traveling. Watch over them and be with them. Uh, the main things that go on in our lives, things at work, at home. Uh, pray for each other, remember each other in prayer. Uh, remember Brian in prayer. Brian's having some, some, some dental problems. Uh, remember him in prayer. He's had to make some decisions as for what he needs to do. So remember Brian uh, Newton in prayer as for with his uh, 
picked out things that he has, some, some key problems that he's having, so remember him in prayer. Again, uh, the other people on our prayer list, just remember these in prayer, uh, the main things that are going on, the thing, different things that are happening. All the men and women in the military and their families, continue to remember them in prayer. Christian missionaries, and even Christians throughout the world, there are others, uh, there are Christians that are being persecuted just for their faith. Uh, so remember the many Christians and Christian missionaries throughout the world um, that need our prayers and are going through very difficult times and, uh, and hard times. Anne and Bernie Garrett continue to remember both of them in prayer. Bernie just continues little by little on a decline as far as with different things going on. Uh, so remember him in prayer as well as Anne. Anne basically takes care of 24-7 um, and it's just hard on both of them. Um, so remember both Ann and Bernie Garrett and what takes place as far as with them. Uh, Miss Hattie Carter, she is still in a nursing home in St. Francisville. She fell, but uh, Debbie said, but she's doing okay. Um, but just remember, continue to remember Miss Hattie Carter, and she's in a nursing home in St. Francisville, uh, Louisiana. So remember her as well as all in nursing homes and in hospitals. Remember them in prayer. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, we come before you this morning. We thank you for your grace, for your mercy. We thank you that we are able to come together this morning to worship, praise, and glorify you. And we come together to say thanks. We come together to worship you, to praise you. Lord, we lift up in prayer all the prayers that have been mentioned. Many, many have been mentioned this morning, as well as those in the Sunday school time. We pray for your help, for your guidance. For, we pray for your will to be done in each and every prayer. We pray for help, Father, with all the things that take place in the lives of different people. We pray for those that are going through difficult times, physical problems that they are having, physical ailments that they're dealing with. Lord, we don't know why or how come sometimes, but we pray for your help and for your guidance as we go through that. Uh, things that go on at home or at work, and we deal with the many things in life itself as far as in the world and, and, and different things around us, and we pray for your guidance and for your leadership. All the men and women in the military and their families, be with them and help them. Those in nursing homes and in hospitals, be with them as well. Miss Hattie Carter, Pauline Langsford, and so many others, Lord, dealing with different things as they are in nursing homes. Lord, we pray for the economy that really shakes up everyone concerning different things in the world. We pray for help and for guidance. The, the upcoming election, we pray for guidance and for help of what to do or not to do, and pray for your guidance of what we are to who we are to vote for and how we are to vote in different situations. We pray for help, for guidance, and for leadership. And Lord, we especially pray for salvation. For those who do not know Jesus Christ, friends, family members, co-workers, people here in this church, or people throughout the churches that are in your house, pray you'll touch their hearts, their lives, for those who are not saved, and that by your grace and for your glory, that you save them this day. This we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us continuously sing to the Lord. Well, off your hand turn 575. Let's stand as we sing, I will sing of my Redeemer.
we thank you for the fact that you loved us so much that you died for our sins. And I pray, Almighty God, that all who are here may know this, and that those who do not know you may come to know you today. All that is collected today, Father, we pray your blessing upon it, and see to it that it's used in the furnace of your kingdom, the spreading of the gospel. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. share with you in some of the familiar one, it's in loving kindness Jesus came. This is basically a song I found to be one to where it presents the gospel and reveals that indeed in Jesus Christ we find hope and salvation.
Christ came and he died. He died to lift us out of the sand and put us upon the solid rock. That is the gospel. Turn, if you will, your Bibles to Matthew chapter 13, verses 47 through 51. Matthew chapter 13, looking at the parable of the net. You know, many people don't care for the parables of Jesus, or should I say, many do not understand, but some of them don't even like some of the things that are said, and the Pharisees and Sadducees of Jesus, they didn't like it. And there are many things that are said here that people, some people believe and some people don't. But here we see an interesting thing with the parable of the net. In Matthew chapter 13, verses 47 and following, notice it says, once, a king, once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it on shore. There they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw away the bad. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous. They will throw them into the fiery furnace where they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all of these things, Jesus asked. Yes, they replied. Interesting. Kingdom of heaven is like a farmer who planted good seed in his field, but sometime during the night, the enemy came and planted weeds. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. Although the seed is small, it will grow into a very large tree. The kingdom of heaven is like a net that is cast into the sea and caught all kinds of fish. Here in Matthew chapter 13 and other places as well, Jesus often said the kingdom of heaven is life. Now how many of you truly believe that there is a heaven? How many of you truly believe that there is a hell? The Bible speaks of both. But yet people like to hear about one, but they don't like to hear about the other. No one does. Not even I. No one. But we need to understand that, you know, both are real. Because the Bible tells us so. And we need to understand that either we believe all the Bible, or believe none of it. Either all of it is true, or none of it is true. And I mean every bit of it. All of it is the Word of God. Not just what Jesus says, but also what is written in the Old Testament by Moses, by Jeremiah, by David, what is written in the New Testament by Paul, and Peter, and James, and all of it. All of it is the Word of God. Every bit of it. You know, I've conducted many, many funerals over the years. You ever read some of the tombstones at some of the great sites? Many people don't, but I have a few that people have read uh, over the years concerning in different places in different states. You know, in, in a Maryland cemetery, there's one that says, here lies an atheist, all dressed up and no place to go. There's one in Pennsylvania cemetery that says, here lies the body of Jonathan Blake, Stepped on the gas instead of the brake. Now these are supposed to be real things that are written on the tombstones in these places. In Albany, New York, there was written one, born 1903, died 1942. Looked up the elevator shaft to see if a car was, was on its way down. It was. England, one written in England, says, it had, he had written on this, and I, I've heard this one before as well, it says, remember, man or woman, as you walk, as you are now, so once was I. As I am now, so shall you be. Remember this and follow me. Many sayings as far as in different places, as far as, the, you know, funerals, death, cemeteries, it's something that people, you know, you don't talk much about. It's not something on your everyday conversation. But you know, it does make us think, about our own mortality. To make us think and ask ourselves, is there really anything beyond the grave? And the astonishing question, and the, and the question is, is yes, there is a thing beyond the grave. Both good and bad, beyond. 
This is not, this is not all that there is. As I have often told many people as far as in the Lord, the beginning of our life really begins when we go on to be with the Lord. Or if the Lord comes back and takes us to be with Him. Then we have all eternity without sin, without pain, without suffering, without all, all the things of the world. But there is things at the end. There are things beyond even the grave. And that showed us as well. Moses died and was buried on Mount. Elijah was taken up in the whirlwind. There on the Mount of Transfiguration, who stood before Peter, James, and John, and the brother of John, was Moses and Elijah. Showing, again, the reality is that when we die, we go on either to be with the Lord or we don't go on to be with the Lord. But we do live for eternity. And the eternity you live, you either live in heaven or you live in hell. Even hell is not the end of all things, as some people may like to think. Many people say, well, when I, when I go die, and if I don't believe in the Lord and I go to hell, I won't know. Yes, they will. In the parable of the, of the rich man and Lazarus, even Jesus related that even there, the rich man was in agony and in pain, showing the reality of what takes place and what happens. And even here. And we have this parable that Jesus has said. Notice, first of all, in verse 47, as he so relates this parable concerning the different things that he's talked about, he says, once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. The first thing that we see here is that throwing the net into the sea or letting it down into the body of water. The net is the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven and the gospel. That's the net. The sea or the lake or the water is the, is the whole world. The whole world. Not just part of the world, but the whole world. The fish. The fish are all kinds of people. Good and evil, rich and poor, saved and unsaved. The fishermen. The fishermen represent Christ and his followers. You see, what we need to understand is that the gospel is cast out into the world like a huge net, thrown out. And all kinds of fish are caught. Now, the fish, this is a mixture of good and bad in the kingdom of heaven while on this earth. You see, the net, which is the gospel, the gospel is this. It is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is the gospel. So the gospel and the kingdom gathers all kinds of fish, all kinds of people into the net. Again, both good and bad. In Matthew chapter 13, Jesus talks about the wheat and the weeds and other things as well, the goats and the sheep and other places as well. Now, again, as I mentioned, this net is huge. It's big. And it's thrown out. And it's big enough to do what? It gathers all types of fish from all the world. Not just the part of the world, from all the world. And understand that in this net, none is missed. None. See, God's net doesn't miss anyone. The net also permits nothing and no one to escape. It picks up everything and nothing is left behind. Now, I know we have some fishermen probably in here and probably some people who have used nets as far as casting out. And you all know that when you cast out, especially like on your train, you cast out there and they'll tell them what you get besides the fish. How much trash you can pick up? License plates. Tires, you name it. There's no telling what's in Lake Pontchartrain besides the fish, the crabs, and other things that's in there, and the shrimp, and, the, and different other things as well. This net collects all things, collects everything. It says all kinds of fish. Nothing is left behind. Now, the fishermen, or every true believer, including ministers, evangelists, Sunday school teachers, deacons, WMU leaders or people in WMU and men's group and youth group and so forth. It's, 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 all, it's all true believers. And what they're doing is casting out the net. We're throwing out the gospel. We're telling all concerning about Jesus Christ and what he has done. 
See, we throw out these nets into the sea, that is, into the world. And what we're doing is we're telling others of Jesus Christ and what he has done. If it's nothing more than him than, than telling our next door neighbor, our co-worker, or people we meet concerning what Christ has done for us in our lives, that's sharing the gospel. You may think, well, I don't share the gospel. Yes, you do. If you tell others what Christ has done for you, or that Jesus lives in your life and how you were saved by his blood, you are telling the gospel. You are relating to other people what God is doing and what Christ is doing as well. It's sharing about Jesus. All Christians are fishermen, not just some. All of us are. Remember when Jesus first called, he said, I will make you fishers of men. We're all fishers of men, every one of us, male, female, whomever, all believers. We proclaim the gospel. Understand, the goal of the fishermen, and here what we see in verse 47, is simply to gather the fish. It's to tell others of Jesus Christ. It's related to them. If you notice what it says in here, there's a net was thrown out and let down into like and caught all kinds of fish. See, we go out and we tell up concerning with all. All are told about the gospel. In Matthew chapter 22, Jesus related concerning the parable of the wedding banquet. And if you notice in here, he tells those who are the fishermen, those who are Christians. He relates to them in Matthew chapter 22 and verses 8 and following. He related and says, Then he said to his servants, The wedding banquet is ready, and those whom I have invited do not deserve to come. That is, those who did not want to come. Go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. Not just some, anyone. I mean, go tell it to all. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all people they could find, both good and bad, to the wedding hall. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. You see, we're to tell to all the people. Not be selective in who we tell. Tell it to everyone. Let everyone know. I don't care how good that person may be or how bad that person you think may be. Understand, all people need to hear the gospel. All people. All people need to come to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. All. We have the good news. We have the news of hope and eternal life. What do people have in the world today that they can look forward to? Think about it. Not much in this earth that we have looking for, that we can look forward to in the future at all from what we see and what's taking place even in our world today. All we do have looking forward to is what is for us for all eternity. That is with God. That is with Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And we can relate this to all people. So go out and throw the net of the gospel let others hear about Jesus Christ. Secondly, notice, throwing the fish into the basket. Now here's where some of the people have problems and difficulties. Notice it says that after they've caught all kinds of fish, notice it says when it was full, not half full, not three quarters of the way full, it says when it was full, the fishermen pulled it up to shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in the basket, but threw away the bad ones. Now, understand. The good fish and the bad fish are not people who have done good deeds or bad deeds. Now, if they do, people do good deeds and bad deeds. But, understand that the good fish here and all of those that are bad fish that are thrown away, these represent the believers and the non-believers. Those who are saved and those who are not saved. We need to understand that. And we're not saved because of good deeds. The Bible is quite clear on that. We are saved. We are not saved because of good deeds or good works, but we're saved, it says, according to Ephesians chapter 2, we're saved by faith in Christ. When we repent of our sin and come before Him and rely upon the blood of Christ that when He died on Calvary, upon that we are saved. Not because we've done X amount of good deeds over here, or X amount of good deeds over here, and some of our bad deeds are here, and there's a scale that, that God has and says, okay, let me see how many good things you've done and bad things you've done, and take this one scale out. 
That's fictitious. That's a lie. There's no such thing. We're not saved because of that. If we were, none of us would be saved. None of us. Because of, the Bible says there's no good thing that we can do to earn salvation. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says it's by grace, through faith in Jesus Christ. So the bad and the good here does not represent the good things or the bad things. Again, it represents those who are saved and those who are not saved. Now, once the net is full, it says, it is pulled on shore, and then there is a separation. There is a separation between those who are saved and those who are not saved. Those who even may, who are, let's say, false teachers, or those who have or practicing or preaching false doctrine or those who even made false professions of faith. You know, even though both are in the net together, both the good and the bad, at the end, they will not be together. There will be a separation. You know, the world is a mixture of both good and bad. We know this. We can't deceive ourselves. We know that there are good and there are bad. We also know that there are genuine believers and there are non-believers. You know, even in the churches, there are mixtures of good and bad. There are people who do believe in our churches, and there are people who do not believe. There are people in our churches, some who generally believe in their heart, and there are others who are not. And there are even some that come and walk down the aisle and make professions of faith, but they are not truly saved because they are not resting upon the finished work of Jesus Christ. They're still latching on to the things that they have done. They come down and they talk to the preacher and they, or the evangelist or whoever it may be, and they say all the right things, but yet their heart, they have never given to the Lord. Their heart, they have not truly given to Him. And so they have made this false profession of faith. But yet, again, Jesus says, by their fruits you will know them. In other words, we're not saved because of it, but by our fruit, people will know who and what we are. They will see whether or not we're real or not real. Leon Hill, he was a, a preacher of the Church of Christ. And he was asked one day, are you one of those narrow-minded believers that think that only the Church of Christ people are going to heaven? Now, let me tell you, there are people in different religions who think that only their church is going to heaven. There are a number of them. I know that there are. And he said, and he quoted it, and Leon Hill said, he replied, I am narrow-minded, that I know that I believe that not even half of the people are going to heaven. That even half of his people. He says, I am not narrow to know that not even, not even half of them in the church of God are going to heaven. Here is what I believe according to the Word of God. This is not according to the Gospel of Frank, but according to the Word of God. Here is what Jesus so proclaimed concerning that. In Luke chapter 13 and verse 22 and following, here Jesus says, they went through the towns and the villages and he, there were Jews and someone asked him, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? Here's the Lord's Here's what the Lord says. Make every effort to enter through the narrow door because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. Why? Because they were not truly saved. Because they truly did not get their heart in their life. Because they never did repent of their sin. They will not. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the doors, you will stand outside and pleading, Sir, open up to us. But he will answer, I don't know you or where you come from. Then they will say, well, wait. We ate with you. We drank with you. We were even taught in the streets. We replied, I don't know you or where you come from. Away from me, you evildoers. You see, you need to understand. Just because of coming to a church doesn't save a person. Just being in the Sunday school class doesn't save a person. Being with the WMU, ACT teams, and so forth doesn't save a person. What saves a person is when a person truly repents of their sins and relies upon the work of Christ that he has done at Calvary. That's what it says. It's by the blood of Jesus Christ. Not of works. It says you've been saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Not of works. Lest any man should boast. 
Abraham was not saved because of works, but because it says it was credited in his righteousness because he believed the word of God. And this is what the word of God says. See, here's the word of God. And you know what it says? It says, for all, all who have faith in Jesus Christ shall be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever believed in him should not perish but have eternal life. It's because of what Christ has done. It's what he has done. Don't be deceived. Don't be misled. There are many people, Jesus said, that are going to be that are going to miss getting into heaven because they have not professed faith in Christ Jesus, because they have not put their faith in Christ. So many, unfortunately, and it's sad to think of it as well. Understand, be sure of your salvation. Be sure of what you know and what the Bible says concerning that, concerning God's salvation. By faith in Christ Jesus and what he has done at Calvary. And then the third thing we see as well is throwing the wicked into the fiery furnace. Oh, how sad it is that even Jesus had to talk about this. Notice in verse 49 and following, he says, and he says, a, he says as he so replies in it, he says, Understand that this is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And he asked them, he says, do you understand all of this? And their reply was, yes, we understand all of this. I truly wonder sometimes if they did. I truly wonder sometimes if people from the church, if they truly understand. Notice, no appeals, no discussion, there's no arguments. God, the angels of God, will come and separate those who belong to God and those who do not belong to God. I won't separate you. Only the Lord will. You see, I think here it's clear in these verses. In the end, God doesn't make mistakes. I've seen many things where, uh, in comic strips and different other places where it talks about God and says, oops, I messed up. Matter of fact, there's one today in Hagar the Horrible concerning uh, Hagar the horrible getting uh, different things that happened to him and everything else and, and, it, and it, it seemed as though he was the wrong person he was getting hit and, and, the, and the voice says oops God doesn't do any oops God doesn't make any mistakes God is perfect I'm not perfect we're not perfect God is perfect he doesn't make mistakes he knows who is saved and who is not he knows your heart I don't know your heart he knows whether or not it's true or it's genuine. But understand, here Jesus is relating to them. There's no loopholes. There's no more pardons. There's no even no second chances. What will happen here will be final. It will take place. Understand, God takes no pleasure in the death of an unsaved person. None whatsoever. And his desire, according to 2 Peter chapter 3, is that none would perish, but all would come to have eternal life. But they do not. You remember in Luke chapter 19, it said the, the, the longest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. Why did Jesus weep? As he looked over Jerusalem, he, I, I believe, and it with been many others who maybe think differently, and that's fine. I believe that Jesus wept because what he saw were many, many, many unsaved people. Many people who turned away from God. Many people who rejected him as the Messiah. You know, the Bible warns us concerning not only of hell, but also of heaven, but also warns us of heaven. Not that people, not to put people in agony, but in order to save people from it. To, un to help us to understand the reality that there is a heaven and there is a hell. And what we need to understand is that Jesus came to save. He came to save. Save you from what? From your sin, but also from the depths of hell. To save you so that you won't have to go there by putting faith and trust in Him. Once a man written, had written this and he said to this, he says, I dreamed one night that death came, and heaven's gates swung wide, where kindly grace and angel fair ushered me inside. And there, to my astonishment, stood folks I have known on earth, 
Some I've judged and labeled as unsaved, of little worth. Indignant words rose to my lips, but never was set free. For every face showed stunned surprise. No one expected me. And that is so true, because you see, it's by grace, God's grace, by faith in Jesus Christ. You know, today, many people are saying, well, God will never send me to hell. You're right. I agree. God will never send any one of you to hell. God doesn't send any of you. You send yourself because you reject Jesus Christ. He is the only way to heaven. Contrary to what others may think, Oprah, different doctors, and blah, theology, and Unitarian Church, and so forth, everything, there is only one way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life, and no one comes unto the Father except through me. It's only through him. It's only by professing faith in him. It's only by repenting of your sin and trusting in him and his work on the cross. Let me ask you, why did Jesus die on the cross? And he said, well, I don't know why he died on the cross. He was a fool to do it. You know, I kind of agree with him, but that fool that saved me. No matter how much they think of it, that's right. He died for my sin and he died for your sin. Whether that person thought it was foolish or not, that's up to him. But to me, I think it's the greatest thing that God has ever done. It was the best thing that God has ever done. He came and he died for me. He died not only for my sin, but he also died so that way I would not have to experience the torments of hell. That I would not have to be where Jesus here talks of and what he says in here. And they will be thrown into the fiery furnace where they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth for all eternity. Death is not the beginning, it is but the beginning, not the end, but it's the beginning. It's the beginning of either life in heaven with God or in hell for all eternity. It's the beginning for all things. God loves you very much. And I've often said, how much does God love? He loved you so much that he sent his son to die for you and for me. He sent his son that we could have eternal life. And that's found only, only in Jesus Christ. Now, is it exclusive? Yes. But it inclusive? No. It's for all people. It says all kinds of fish. The net came out and it pulled up all kinds of fish. It's for all people. And all they have to do is believe in Jesus Christ. Believe in him as the one true way. Put in faith in him. Repent of sin. And come and stand before him and say, Lord, I have sinned against thee and against heaven. I have done wrong. Acknowledging what he has done. Death is not the end, but there will be a separation. The separation is, where will you be? When you stand before God, will you be the ones that he, throw, that he says, come on in, my faithful servant? Or will you be the ones that discard and thrown away, whether we be weeping and gnashing of teeth? Where is your life, and what is your life like today? Let us stand. Almighty God, we come before you. Lord, the word has been presented today to all who are here. And I pray if there is anyone whom you have spoken to today, and they are saying unto them, come unto me. I pray that by your grace and for your glory, they will come unto you at this moment. That they may truly know you in their hearts and in their lives. This we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. There you hear number 285. Wherever he leads, I'll go. Whatever the Lord Christ is saying to you, you come as we say. Thank you.
can't remember we will not have service this evening. We will not have Wednesday night Bible study this coming Wednesday night as well. So keep these two things in mind. Uh, for those ladies and people who would like to come, there's uh, again a baby shower in the back from two to five if you would like to come for that. There is food. I don't know if you want to wait too long with you. It's up to you uh, as far as all that. But anyhow, there is a uh, shower being done there from two to five and you're welcome to come and join in and, and celebrate of uh, the baby that will be born. Uh, this coming Saturday, again, uh, for those who would like to come from 5 o'clock until we'll have our, our festival, our August festival, our time of fellowship coming together as we with that. Um, you're invited to come to that. There's a sign sheet if you want to come. You know what you're going to bring. Sign it so that way we'll know if people would know what to bring or not bring it for those that have. And that will be next Saturday from 5 until. And again, you can come earlier if you want. That's up to you. Uh, you might be here at 5. You can come here earlier. Uh, as for coming and enjoy each other's fellowship. We invite you to come next week and worship with us uh, in God's house next Sunday. Sunday school 9 15, worship service at 10 30. God bless indeed with each and every one. Again, remember, we will be ordering calendars for 2009, so they'll be coming in soon. So if you have purchased them, in from us. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'll leave Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father, for the life you've given us. We thank you, Father, for watching over us, providing for our needs, taking care of us. We thank you for the families you've given us. We thank you for the love that you've shown and showered us with. Father, if we go our separate ways, I pray that we will be the Christian.